Hi, welcome to the channel. Great to see you. I'm Chris Lado. I'm a retired F-16 pilot now investigating the UAP enigma, so the phenomenon. This video will be a part of a series on best evidence against our current mainstream cosmological models, which is the expanding universe related to the Big Bang, dark matter, and dark energy. This is very interesting to me because it shows and highlights directly how our mainstream science will not allow new ideas to come up. It will actually censor the ideas. And that's what many opponents to UAPs ask, why is there no peer reviewed papers? Although there are a few, where are all the peer reviewed papers? And the argument is you can't get a peer reviewed paper into a major article saying that aliens exist. You can't ask for funding to actually look into the phenomenon to look into the existence of aliens on earth because it will be shot down immediately by the mainstream science it's all based on funding and where does the funding come many times it comes from the government from nasa and other large organizations and i'll show you in this video along with others that making the argument against uh, the main current model of the big bang dark matter dark energy are not even allowed into your mainstream articles according to eric lerner so this video has the best evidence that i've seen against the actual big bang and the current models and definitely dark matter has been falsified to a five sigma level which means very confident so thank you for being here it really helps please hit the like button if you are liking this content get to the video Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Okay, the Big Bang is a physical theory that describes how the universe expanded from an initial state of extremely high density and temperature. It was first proposed in 1927 by Roman Catholic priest and physicist George Lemaitre. His name is in the model's name. So the Big Bang model offers a comprehensive explanation for a broad range of observed phenomena that we'll talk about, including the abundance of the light elements, so hydrogen, helium, deuterium, lithium. It also talks about the cosmic microwave background radiation, the CMB radiation, and the large scale structure of the universe. We'll explain how the Big Bang does not answer these questions. It also talks about the hubble lemaitre law, known as Hubble's law is the observation in physical cosmology that galaxies are moving away from Earth at speeds proportional to their distance. In other words, the further they are away, then the faster they are moving away from Earth has been determined by their redshift, a shift of the light that they emit toward the red end of the visible spectrum. So the further they are away from us, the more red they will appear. You've also heard this as a Z number. They count this redshift denoted by Z. So you may have heard of the crisis in cosmology, and this really comes about based on inaccurate or disparate numbers that we're receiving as we try and measure this redshift. This is Eric Lerner from LPP Fusion, and he gives an amazing briefing here. The Big Bang never happened, the science of the censored papers. So I'll reference this, and there's a link in the description. If you wanna watch, I recommend uh, the full video. This is the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, okay? And this is the measurement of that. And then the orange here is distance ladder by our CFID. So these are stars that we see from far away. And again, getting more and more accurate as we get further in time. So currently these models are differing. So this is Hubble's constant here. Remember it should be a constant, but as we find now, these are different numbers is what they're receiving for this very important redshift velocity. And this is key to the actual Big Bang and the expanding universe. And if you've heard of the recent crisis in cosmology, this is what it comes down to. It's these two numbers are totally different. So we're getting different numbers for the Hubble constant. Okay, for the light elements, the Big Bang model should predict the actual light elements accurately. So hydrogen, helium, deuterium, and lithium. And it should predict this accurately because if everything started out as a very small point and then expanded, then what would create first should be the stars. And then those will form into larger structures into galaxies. And then those galaxies will form into larger structures, which are superclusters. But what should have been formed at the beginning is these light elements. So they should accurately predict how much of each of these light elements actually exist in the universe. 
And according to Eric Lerner is these numbers are way off. Okay, the only number that's actually close is deuterium. That's the only number that, that is actually predicted. Actually for helium is off and lithium is definitely off. So helium is far too low. If we look around and measure the helium that's around us and our local stars is far too low. This is the minimum level. And what we're finding is helium is way down here. So helium is much lower, too low a number in helium in our local stars. And it's even worse, gets much worse if you look at lithium. So lithium abundance decreases towards zero and are at least 20 times less than the Big Bang model. So this is where lithium should be based on the Big Bang. And yet when we actually measure, when we look around at our universe around us, we find that lithium is much too low. So the light elements are incorrect. The only one that's correct is deuterium. That's it. The other ones is way off. Now let's look at the cosmic microwave background, right? You've heard that that is definitely a huge supporter of the Big Bang, but let's look at why Eric Lerner says that is not actually the case. So this is the cosmic microwave background, right? 2.7 Kelvin across the whole universe that we can look at. And this has given a huge support for the Big Bang that it started at a very small, super dense point and then expanded. And what we're seeing is the end results of that enormous explosion requires inflation. But if you look at the CMB, what it means is it's not isotropic and it's not random, okay? So in order for the entire universe to have come from the same point, the cosmological principle says that it must be the notion that the spatial distribution of matter in the universe is uniformly isotropic and homogeneous when viewed at a large enough scale. This is because the forces are expected to act equally throughout the entire universe on a large scale and should therefore produce no observable inequalities in the large scale structuring over the course of evolution. And that's based on the Big Bang. So the Big Bang exploded, created the cosmic microwave background. And that should be completely isotropic, which means every direction we should see exactly the same thing. And random elements of it should be totally random based on coming from the same single point. According to Eric Lerner here, what you see is that is not the case, okay? So this is actually our solar system here, this weird angled solar system, and this is our galaxy. So as we look up the galaxy, down the galaxy, this is what we see. And these are the temperature differentiations. What you'll notice is they are not the same. So if we look below our solar system, below the plane of our solar system, we see this colder area in blue, followed by a hotter area in red. Okay, so that means it's not isotropic. It's not isotropic. It's also not random because what we see here is we look down, it's actually colder and then hotter. And as we look on the other side, it's it's hotter, right? Red here first and then and then the blue. So that's above our solar system, above the plane of our solar system. And we see more differences when we look below our solar system, right? Then if we look above the solar system, meaning the CMB fluctuations are not random and they're not isotropic. So this is a huge problem for the current models. The one I explained there of the Lambda EM, the Lambda cold dark matter model. What we're seeing is the universe is not isotropic. It's not the same in every direction. So the cosmological principle, which is critical for the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe does not hold based on the CMB. This is according to Eric Lerner. Okay. And then the third account that I gave at the beginning that supports the Big Bang is that the large scale structures of the universe. So the Big Bang model theory of the universe should explain the large scale structures of our universe, but it doesn't. It clearly doesn't. Okay. And this one is, is huge for me based on expanding from a certain location, right? The universe is only 13.6 billion years old. What this means is there has not been enough time at the speed that everything is able to move for there to be structures any larger than 1 billion light years across. There was not enough time based on the Big Bang model for these large structures to form. And yet we see structures much larger than this. I made a video about the big ring lately but that's just the most recent finding. We found many others. This is a 3 billion year long arc. If you look at Boots Void, also extremely large. How can these voids be larger than the actual structure of the universe would allow based on the Big Bang model? So if you find something that's larger than 1 billion years, 
then that should falsify the Big Bang model. It should falsify this idea of expanding space from one single point. Finally, from Eric Lerner's presentation, what was really interesting to me was about surface brightness of these galaxies at distance based on their size. So if we look at nearby spiral galaxies, especially because spiral galaxies work the best, you can get how bright they are as a ratio to the actual diameter of the galaxies. And that ratio should be the same, whether you're close or far away, right? If I put a light right here, based on this, the brightness of this light and how far across it is, that ratio should be the same as we move that light further away. So double the distance now, brightness of that light should go down by a factor of four, right? By the square of the distance, by a factor of four. But what we find is in this expanding space model, that is not the case. So if the universe is actually expanding as proposed by the law, then what we should expect to see some distant difference in the surface brightness of these galaxies as space actually expands. And if the space is expanding, then we should expect to see the surface brightness go down by the cube. So according to a Big Bang model, according to Eric Lerner, the surface brightness of the galaxies compared to how far away that they are from us, space should expand so that their surface brightness decreases. It should decrease along this line. Okay, but instead, what do we see? These are hundreds and thousands of galaxies actually went and looked at the actual observational data. And what they found is it matches pretty much exactly along a non-expanding universe. The surface brightness data stays exactly the same. So if I have a galaxy right here, spiral galaxy, the surface brightness compared to the diameter, and I move it way far away, so almost to the, ex the max extent that we can possibly see, the actual surface brightness related to the diameter of that galaxy is the same, meaning nothing has expanded. It matches exactly to a non-expanding universe. So how do the cosmologists get around this one? They say that actually space only expands where there's not gravity present, not gravity present. They also say that there needs to be dark matter. That is the lambda cold dark matter model. But as we'll see in this next clip, dark matter has been falsified. This cold dark matter has been falsified. From the Institute of Art and Ideas, renowned astrophysicist Pavel Kropa. I'm skeptical. Um, I would, I would uh, say that um, the existence of dark matter, uh, cold dark matter particles, has been falsified with more than five sigma confidence. Uh, so um, um, it's not there. Um, in fact, it's much more than five sigma. There are a few key experiments you can do, experiments in the sense of um, uh, the theory predict, making very clear hard predictions, the dark matter theory, and then we can test that against the observations. And one particularly uh, strong uh, prediction is uh, that we, if you have galaxies orbiting other galaxies and they are uh, moving around in the dark matter halo, so every galaxy has this huge dark matter halo, and if it's moving around this dark matter halo, it will be suffering, it will be losing kinetic energies, it will be s getting slower and falling towards the center of the other galaxy and merge. So this is called the dynamic of friction. So same as if you have a pot of honey and you put a marble into the honey, it will not accelerate downwards, but it will slowly sink. Yeah? Although if you have the same pot without honey, the ball will just fall down quickly. In the honey, it will sink slowly. So that is basically the same thing happens in a dark matter halo. A galaxy enters this dark matter halo and it slowly sinks down. It doesn't accelerate fast as it should if there were no dark matter halo. So we've tested this observationally and um, uh, the effect of the slowing down is not there. Yeah, with uh, with that type of confidence. And um, so the galaxies are encountering each other far too rapidly. And a case in point is the large Magellanic clouds, which is just now racing past our Milky Way, very close to the Milky Way, actually, and it's far too fast. So, uh, and the small Magellanic clouds too. And so this was a prediction that was made by the, the claim that dark matter exists and it's been falsified. Yeah, absolutely. So, observation. Exactly. So why do people still, in your view, cling on to this idea of dark matter? Existence? Well, that's an interesting sociological problem, which um, one would like to understand because it has no rational basis. Uh, it is non-rational and it's probably related to, um, to um, 
sociological pressures in the community. So when students come into the research, so they study and then they want to do a project, research project, they are, um, for one thing, attracted by the interesting ideas and, and possibilities of doing research, and uh, the other by um, how great the group looks like they would like to join. Yeah, so it's tribal thinking, and, um, and that pulls a lot of young people into um, an established um, uh, thinking because just that's where they can have a career, that's where the funding is, uh, that's where the uh, leaders of the field are famous, they get prizes, and that's a self-strengthening system in a scientific uh, establishment which relies on competition for funding. And that is simply, and I think that's the whole fallacy of the situation that um, um, and that's a, comes from Amer American United States, this concept of competition for funding in the sciences is the most stupid idea you could have even in, uh, thought up because that's absolutely not how science works. So that was very strong words from Pavel Kropa basically relaying how dark matter can still be falsified, but have so many people still clinging to the idea. He says there it's a sociological principle about competition for funding. And I see the same thing happening in the search for extraterrestrial life, that you cannot get any sort of funding for possibility that ETs are here on Earth. So it's, it's just completely not possible. So you're not going to see any funding for it. And that's what we'll see from our government organizations as well, who are supposedly investigating this, like the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office in the US. They say it's completely impossible. So there's no way it could be possible. And now we end up in the same issues where decades after decades, we have to hear about the Landa cold dark metal models. We have to hear about uh, the Big Bang, even though I showed several points of evidence there highlighting that only one actual prediction was made correctly by the Big Bang model. And Eric Lerner shows here failed predictions of the Big Bang theory, lithium abundance, helium abundance, large scale Gaussianity. Okay, and this is how much sigma it is. So five in a million chance. Fit of the CMB large scale modes, five in 10,000. Fit to the flat universe, three in 10,000. CMB predictions of H naught. This is the Hubble constant, three in a million. So the chance that it's correct is three in a million, the sigma. That's what we talked about, five sigma. Prediction of matter density, two in 10,000. And prediction of matter lumpiness is one in 20, right? But this is stacked onto all the others as well. And as Pavel mentioned, five sigma, that dark matter doesn't exist. So it looks like we are on, hopefully, finally the cusp. If we have renowned physicists there talking about dark matter completely being falsified, the problem is he mentioned the model, right? The, the competition for funding is the stupidest idea he said ever. This is not actually how you do science. And we have the same issue going on in the phenomena with the actual study or attempted study of extraterrestrial life being possibly here on Earth, despite thousands and thousands of claims by humans to the opposite. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button. It really, really does help the channel, helps the video. Share it as well. That's a great help. And if you want to support further and get exclusive behind the scenes content and early ad free access, then click this little button here that is goes to patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. Really appreciate it. And if you want to join UAP Society, you can go to uapsociety.com, come to our Discord, and join the discussion. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.